On behalf of the, the partners, um, the UK Collaborative on Development Sciences, the British Council, and the uh, International Research Development Centre, I'd like to welcome you to Making It Count, um, a meeting today to explore the open revolution and big data and the challenges that come with public engagement around that. Why did we want to do something like this? Um, and for us, there are a couple of drivers. Um, one of these is political. As many of you in the room will be aware, if you're interested in equitable and sustainable development, data is pretty crucial for driving accountability. It's the means by which we can monitor the outcomes of policy decisions, policy or, or originating from various spheres. Um, it's also how we can monitor the quality of decision making itself. And multilateralism has given a real shot in the arm around this recently um, with the UN high level panel on the post 2015 development agenda calling for a data revolution and a global partnership to support this revolution. And this has actually provided a real opportunity for us with uh, the generation of some political will, um, a fair amount of intellectual energy going into operationalizing and conceiving this. And certainly we and our partners are very excited about the possibility. There's also a scientific driver behind this. Um, in the last two years, we have seen about 90% of all data available generated. That's 90% of current data generated in two years. And this is a result of the proliferation of technology and a proliferation of information gathering and processing capacity. This presents a significant opportunity for us. Uh, and some say that actually it heralds a scientific revolution of a sort, sort that we haven't seen for a couple of centuries. And indeed, when you think about what that data could afford us, the opportunity to see new relationships and phenomena, and you can look at, for instance, the mapping of the human genome and what that means for personalized medicine, you can see that in fact, we are talking about something that is actually really significant. And the implications for development outcomes for the world's poorest are also pretty big if we can take advantage of it. And this brings me to the other thing that I want to talk about, which is actually the reality of trying to respond to those opportunities. Um, SciDev was set up about 11 years ago to provide a platform um, to engage science and policy and innovation in developing countries and to redress actually the under engagement of these particular groups in the global body of knowledge, the global mind, as, um, as some would describe it. Um, but we have found actually taking advantage of the data revolution to be a bit of a challenge. And I'll tell you just very quickly about two examples around this. Um, the first is something called the Data Journalism Awards. Um, last year, these awards, which are held globally, had 85% of their entries from the developed world. That's 15% from the developing world. And this is actually without even breaking that down. And in fact, when they did the short listing for the awards, there was one country, one low income country that had an entry in those awards. So we're talking here about a massive structural failure. And this isn't just actually about providing some training for a few journalists or buying some software. I mean, you know, what we're talking about is a broad and systemic problem. The other thing is actually, and this will illustrate how broad this problem is, is actually talking about SciDev's own experience. Um, because of course, we've been quite excited. We fancy ourselves as, you know, relatively progressive when it comes to journalism and science and research. But we've really struggled. Um, just, I'll give you two examples from the last week. Um, we're working on a package um, of features, and one of these features is actually meant to be a bunch of data visualization um, packages, um, looking at PhDs and doctoral research in Africa. And we have really struggled. In fact, we, I was talking to the editor, and he said actually about 5% of the data that we wanted to have is what we've been able to get. And there are some significant multilateral, bilateral, major universities that we need to depend on for that data. And they're all very wary. They're wary because of commercial interests. They're wary because they said actually their infrastructure is not set up for that, because it's not part of the organizational culture. I mean, there's a list of reasons why we're in the position that we're in. 
I mean, just myself last week as well, I, I went to get some stuff actually um, from the World Bank's data development platform <laughs> and was reminded that this is for internal use only. So what do we do? Um, we recognize that we need to have, first of all, a framework that determines basically how we ought to be engaging with the data revolution. What does that mean for us? And we've been drawing a lot on this idea of intelligent openness, which talks about accessibility, accessibility, intelligibility, and reusability. So that's basically what's kind of guiding our approach to accessing, using, and processing data from the perspective of journalism. And this is really important because, you know, one of the things that um, many of you will have heard and we think is completely fundamental to our mission is that the data is really the raw material. What we need to do is to process that. And that's why we do what we do. And when I say we, I'm talking about site and its partners. And I'll talk about the partnership in a second. But uh, this raises a whole range of challenges for us across what we describe as the value chain for data journalism. And that starts basically with the capacity to gather and extract data, but it goes right through this to the point where we can actually use this for social action for change. And so it's in this context that we actually started to um, work with a couple of people. Um, and we're very grateful that the UK Collaborative on Development Sciences in particular have been very forthcoming. Um, and we've started initiated a series of activities um, to respond to the post-2015 development agenda, and this meeting is one of them. Um, we've also talked a bit about really how we can engage science more broadly across the, the post-2015 development agenda. But what we recognize is how systemic this, these issues are, and the fact that they are ingrained at a variety of levels. So when we talk, for instance, about um, the issues around monitoring data usage and data dissemination. And we recognize that, as Claire Malamed says, the old rules of representation still apply. We also need to recognize that actually there are pressures on each of these actors, as it were, through the value chain. And it's important for the media to appreciate that. It's important for the people who are levering the pressure to also appreciate what the ripple effect is of these kinds of issues. So whether it's actually about the way that we reward research, the way we incentivize the intermediaries who disseminate research, and how we might stimulate demand itself actually amongst the larger audience. This requires that engagement from a number of, of folks in different systems. Um, also, I mean, you know, many of us in this room will be aware that there's a conversation that's been going on for quite a long time about how unreliable, how patchy data is for development. Um, I think there's a famous statistic suggesting that actually in the last seven years, only 28 of 49 African countries have done any kind of household survey. But does the policy makers, the, the ones who are behind, for instance, the data revolution and who are excited about what it offers, are they aware of the challenge, of the methodological and the operational challenges that this data processing um, presents? Okay. What I'd like to do now is to spend a little bit of time talking about the preview for today's event. Um, we've been quite lucky actually to draw on a number of folks who have been obviously doing a lot of thinking about this, but who've also been able to initiate quite a lot of work around it. Um, so there are some promising stories. I, I'm very wary of talking about best practice, but certainly some promising practice. And what we wanted to do was to explore that. Um, so we didn't want to only interrogate and challenge the theory of change as it were behind the data revolution, but we also wanted to kind of explore some solutions. Think actually whether we scale out or across, whether we mainstream or just showcase some stuff. This is really what today is meant to be about. Um, so we talk about issues around, for instance, the resourcing. You know, it's one thing to say actually, yeah, we need to spend an awful lot of money, you know, by some counts, four billion pounds just to do some basic household surveys. Uh, but we also need to think about some very difficult questions about how we allocate that spend. You know, what are the priorities? What's the kind of data that we're going to, to look at? And, and Martin Hilbert's going to talk a bit about that in his mapping project and so on. Um, we know that there are some very sensitive issues around data collection, um, which again challenges um, received ideas about the methodology that might work. 
And we have Jackie Taylor here from Plain Binary to talk about some of the work that she's been doing around privacy and trust and for us to think about what the implications are um, in the development context. Um, an area that comes up every time you talk about data collection, very big thing, is really about incentivizing researchers in the ways that reward their research is, is assessed and rewarded. So that it's no longer thought of simply as research being for individual researchers, but thinking about research as part of a public good. And here we have actually Alison from the University of Edinburgh to talk a little bit about, about some of this stuff as, a, as an infrastructure service provider. Um, lots of issues around learning from qualitative research and data like Gallup, and also exploring private sector partnerships. Um, and then, of course, tools for new kinds of rigor, given the scale and level of public participation that we expect in data gathering processes. And again, from a research point of view, this is an extremely important, important area, where we have still a lot of very large and pending questions around sampling and so on. And Claire Malamed is going to speak a bit about that in her experience of the My World um, platform, um, which she's been leading on. But there are also other issues which we recognize we might not have previewed here. And this is why we've allowed some open space in the agenda. Um, this allows us basically time to talk about emerging dynamics and emerging relationships. We recognize that we have a room full of expertise. And we'd like to encourage you to, to share that. And you will see some pink post-it um, pads on your table. And there's some easels outside. And so if at any point you have an idea you think you'd like to have a discussion or a little session on something, please feel free to write that down, put it up on a post-it, and in this afternoon session, we'll try and organize what we can. And open space, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but the idea is basically that you kind of get together, talk about what you want to talk about for as long as you want, and, and kind of then feel free to buzz around. Okay. Um, one other thing that I need to talk about, there are in your bags um, evaluation forms, and I would encourage you to complete them. In fact, I'm so keen on encouraging you to complete them that with UKCDS, we are offering a prize. We're going to have a little draw, actually, and here is a best-selling book, Big Data, a revolution that will transform how we live, work, and think. That's available as um, a little prize. I mean, we're not going to assess what you say because we believe in transparency and accountability, um, but we would like to incentivize your participation actually. So in a way, you might say that we're about to practice what we preach. <laughs>